one, Buddy here from the Denman Homestead, and today I want to talk a little bit about something that um, we get a lot of comments on and a lot of feedback, especially when Steph is doing her gardening stuff, and that it is a lot of you guys are uh, don't have the land for a big garden or you're in an apartment or a condo or something small spaces and uh, we get a, a lot of questions about you know how can we do some of this stuff on like a miniature scale smaller scale so in answering those comments i've come across something that i didn't know existed and it seems really cool um and that's on the the um, the category in the category of composting. So, what we have is not a very big, but a decent sized compost pile out by the tea garden. And every so often, you go out there and you shovel it or uh, you know turn it over on itself, and you do that until everything breaks down. inside your compost pile and um, it can be a decent amount of effort to do that especially when it's hot outside so I found that there was a thing called indoor composters I did not know they existed like for kitchens and houses and things like that um, but it they are apparently a thing so I reached out to a company to see if uh, they'd be willing to send us one to try out so that we could try and answer some of your questions that you were having on um, composting and gardening and things like that in a small space. Um, they agreed and I'm pretty excited about it. So I want to see how this system is going to work and we just so happen to to be making our pear wine today so we actually are going to have some fruit scraps that will need to go into the composter so that's kind of perfect that it works out so let's check out indoor composting and just a, a bonus on indoor composting there are times where, with us, with a compost pile, where we are always taking scraps out there, there are times that, for whatever reason, it just slips your brain and you throw something in the trash, and it should have gone in the compost, right? I feel like if you did have an indoor composter, or a composter on your countertop, or whatever it may be, in your kitchen, it would be that much easier to be like, nope, that's not where this goes. Especially with kids, right? When you're training kids on what's trash and what's compost. When the two are right next to each other and they literally have to walk past the composter to throw it in the trash, then I think um, that makes it easier too for them to put two and two together as to what goes where. So I could see lots of benefits to an indoor composter. Um, but the trick is, how does it work? we're going to find out today. So stay tuned. Here it is. So here it is. This is the Niviop composter, indoor composter. Very sleek. The tray at the bottom, just 
pulls out that collects anything. You can uh, any juices or whatever that may have come out of here during the composting. You can just empty this tray out, rinse it out, slide it back in. On the top here, this is just a locking door, so you spin it and lift off. You put all of your food products that you want to compost in here, not meat though, um, just vegetables, fruits and vegetable compost. And this is where it will collect so that you can use it after it turns it into compost. Depending on how full you fill this thing up uh, determines how long it takes. Typically, I believe, when you fill this pot all the way up, it's about four, four and a half hours to turn what's in here into usable compost. So, we are going to go ahead and get started on our pear wine. This will, it'll be a separate video, but I'll come back when we're done with those scraps. Throw it in here and make compost. Okay. I have got the composter full of our scraps of pears from the pear wine process. Okay, so check this out. You can actually watch it as it works in there. You can see through the glass and that's the pear scraps in there. So we're gonna put the lid on, close it. Now we're going to, this is almost full to the top, there's a little bit of space in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and set this to a large capacity here because um, it shows on the little picture. There's a picture above each one. Low is hardly anything in there, medium is half, and large is almost to the top. I'd say we're pretty close to being to the top. And this says that it's going to do five hours and 30 minutes but I want to see what happens if we set it to the quick mode. So it cuts an hour off. I'm interested to see what kind of compost we get um, in four and a half hours. What's so ferment? Ferment. I will find out what ferment mm -hmm. is. But I say let's go ahead and get started with this. We are in the locked position and we're at large, we're on quick. So let's hold this mode button down. There we go. You can see that it is spinning everything around in there. And there's this like carbon filter in the back of it that helps break everything down. The carbon filter, I don't, I'm not sure how long it lasts, but um, it will have to be replaced after a certain amount of uses but it's pretty quiet actually it's very quiet it's very quiet and there's no smell like everything's air locked kind of in there um, this is neat all right so let's check back in four and a half hours and see if we have compost I ain't afraid of compost I'm really interested in this for a minute. oh my god <laughs> remember that joke from the garden you're interested in the ferment? Yeah, I'll figure out what the ferment does while this is happening, while this is doing its thing. All right, so from the manual, what can I put in my kitchen waste composter? Always put fruits and vegetable scraps. Peels, scraps, carrots, broccoli, peas, hummus, watermelon, orange, tangerine. Actually says orange and tangerine on here. Um, that's interesting. So, there are some things out there that say not to compost citrus because the acid can kill the good microbiome that you have in there. This says to throw it in there. I'll do your research on that one. Um, any food leftovers, grains, cereals, any biodegradable materials, tea and coffee, paper filters, coffee grounds, tea bags, paper, even napkins. Interesting. Um, house plants and leaves, starches like bread, pasta, rice, potato, cereals. So here's the things that you should look out for. Fibrous waste, corn husks, pineapple heads, pistachio shells, apples, 
just says apples. Um, anything fibrous may have a difficult time break, breaking down. Don't put anything with oils and sauces in there. Um, stay away from sticky things like honey, maple syrup, jams, nut butters, and things that need to be chopped. Oh, okay. So large paper documents, envelopes, paper packing boxes. Um, I mean, we throw all that kind of stuff in the compost outside, but it just says anything that's too big for here, paper-wise, you want to look out for that. So this actually says peels. Fruit and vegetable scraps for the peels. Peels. Oh, I see. Peels of orange and tangerine. That makes more sense. There we go. So here's the never. Never add hard bones, greasy foods, cooking oils, fruit pits, walnut shells, soaps, shampoo, conditioners, lined bags, soiled papers, baby wipes. Yeah. Styrofoam. Okay. Glass. Pretty obvious. Um, I recommend, it doesn't say it on, on here under the never, it just says cooking, it just says hard bones, but I do not recommend composting meat, right? I, I just, raw meat never, um, and I don't recommend doing cooked meat either just because sometimes you get things in your compost that you don't want. Um, all right, what can the kitchen waste composter fermentation mode do for composting? The intelligent low temperature fermentation function of the kitchen waste composter makes the organic matter go through three different temperature stages, allowing microorganisms suitable for reproduction at different temperatures to grow while killing the eggs of diseased insects. Maintain the Optimum humidity of 60% of the compost, which is most suitable for rapid fermentation of microorganisms. Proper oxygen can inhibit the reproduction of anaerobic bacteria and produce foul gases. Turn the compost pile frequently to distribute the microorganisms evenly through the compost pile. Okay, so it's basically saying that it can, it can kind of create that perfect atmosphere for the microorganisms that you want without um, so we could use that to f use to brew with I would not do that Why? I don't know it just seems weird <laughs> it seems says weird. it's perfect I'm gonna try it. most suitable for rapid reproduction of microorganisms Proper oxygen inhibits the production of anaerobic bacteri bacteria that produce foul gases. Hmm. Well, maybe, maybe that'll be a trial. Maybe we'll try something with fermentation. But you can, I don't know if you can hear it, it's actually kind of fogging up on the top right now because it is warming up in there. Um, there was a sticker that I peeled off that said, don't touch the glass while hot on the top. So it does get pretty warm. Um, it's not very loud at all. It's actually really quiet for it to be creating compost in our kitchen immediately with the scraps that we just made. Pretty excited. I hope it works because I know a lot of you have been asking about how you can do things like this in a small space. If this works, that's going to be cool. Because then you can make your own compost, do a patio garden, throw, put, mix it in with your soil. Typically, I think you do a 1 to 10 ratio with compost and soil. So, pretty cool. Can't wait to see. All right, we'll come back whenever it's done. Okay, the composter is finished. I heard a beep. So, let's see what we got. Looks like compost. Let's put it in here and find out. It's a little stickier than I 
thought it would be, but it could just be because it was all pairs. You also did it on fast mode. Yeah, and it did it on fast mode. But it broke it down. I mean, turned it into compost. So this is what we got. You can see. Oh, that it is. It is compost. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Took a whole bunch of pear scraps and turned it into this compost. Okay, well I'm impressed. Okay, so I got a pot with some dirt in it. And I've got my compost. Throw some dirt in here first, just to mix it all up. Get it incorporated in there, nice and nice and uh, mixed. Add that back in. See if I can find something to put in this pot. Okay, so. Pecan uh, start, pecan sapling. Um, we find these a lot, just kind of hanging out underneath the pecan trees. This one is a little scorched. Um, it's had a rough time, but I'm going to see if we can um, bring it back to life because everyone needs pecan trees, <laughs> more pecan trees. Um, so that was awesome. It incorporated really well, and I know it's you know got a lot. It's going to have a lot of benefit for the plant. So I got to say, I'm pretty impressed. I did not even know until I started on this journey of trying to figure out how we could do composting inside that you could compost things, and especially compost things in a matter of hours in the house. Um, with relative ease. I mean, there's really nothing to it. But I'm act I'm really excited about it. I'm glad I found it. Now it's time to teach the kids that that's where they put their scraps instead of in the trash. Get them used to doing that. Um, I'm sure they'll enjoy that rather than hauling it all outside to the garden. <laughs> but um, yeah, I really, I, I mean, try it out try out an indoor composter if you um if you especially if you're in a situation where you don't have a lot of space and you want to do some composting, and you want to do some gardening so you know even on a small scale this is definitely an option for that and i'm i'm quite impressed with it all right thank you guys so much for joining me on this one and i will catch you on the next one bye everyone mm -hmm.